How is it going guys and welcome back to another live stream over here on YouTube and Twitch. It is Sunday, which means we're playing high stakes PLO tournaments and some cash games on the side on coin poker. This is the $1,000 PLO Eclipse and we'll start open raising here on the seven handed table. Over on this table, we started a heads up match at 510 on WSOP.com. I'm going to start out with a C bet here with a strong hand, two pair, and then a flush draw. And we're also playing a $2,000 pillow tournament, which this buying level has been introduced last week. So Coin Poker now has a 1K, a 2K, as well as a 5K tournament. And we will be playing all of them today on the stream. Got three bet here by Mark Gork from the button, 200 big blinds deep. I'm going to start off with a call. Have a peek at a flop. It's not the greatest board. We're still far behind against aces. And uh, all the combo draws have massive equity and also realizability. Pot size bet, pretty uncommon. Um, but for us, this is a straightforward fold. As markets move to a new table. We also should have the uh, 5k opening up in about two minutes. And over on this table, we play a six max table. At two five. Certainly a hand we can slash will defend. I go with the call. This is a fantastic flop. Probably hard to get value given how much we're blocking, but on the good side, we are unblocking to pairs. So we certainly want to start off by check raising and see if we can get as much money in as possible. Sometimes we get it in against 10-9, which would be great. With our flush draw redraw, as well as our straight draw redraws. Now the ace of spades, uh, ace of diamonds, is giving us some more additional straight outs. We pot. Our opponent is in the tank. In a long tank, indeed. Goes ahead and makes the fault. Over here in the 2K, we three bet pre. And I decided to bet the flop small for one third. Turn goes check, check with ace queen. River check, check, and we win a nice pot here early on in the 2K. Puts us back above starting stack with 200 big blinds. And we also got the 5K tournament starting now. Let me just show you the table here in a moment. Um, so here we checked back on the flop and a single raise pot and turn. Very deceptive straight. Current folds though. And over here we have now the 5k tournament. 200 big plan starting stack as with the others. If you guys are familiar with the coin poker structure, we are looking at a very deep stack starting point, but the tournaments overall don't last too, too long, which I like. So it's a bit faster down the road. 
And obviously in the 5k table, we did see quite a few familiar faces, as you would expect in a $5,000 tournament. Check back with this hand. Maybe we'll make a loose open in the 2K. Unfortunately, we get three bets and there's a four bet. Okay, so we're, we're going to fold. And in the 1K, we wake up with kings. There's a limp from early position. We're going to make this three and a half X. Three ways to a flop. Uh, this is not a spot I'm trying to like build a pot or face a raise. We're just gonna check. One third pot size bet. <clears throat> Call, try and turn a king. It's not a king. And I'm just going to fold the turn, given that the flop was three ways. I think we got to give some respect. So now we are in three tournaments, 1K, 2K, 5K on coin. And we play one heads up 510 game over on WSAP.com. And see if we can finally make a good run. I mean, we did have... Very good runs at the beginning of the year, and then a bit of a stretch of uh, kind of earlier bust outs. Hopefully now, especially in preparation to the PGT, the Poco Go PLO series, I can uh, find some good hands, uh, good runs and good hands. Four funds, what's up? Good luck today, Jane Anderson. Thank you very much. Why are Omaha tools so expensive? Interesting. Which Omaha tools are you talking about? Uh, bed flop. Check, check, turn. You know, expensive is always a relative term, especially in the in the world of gambling, where you can make money um, gambling slash playing poker. PLO Vulture is the name of this tournament, the newly introduced 2K. And we do get three bet here by Straddle. I like this name, Straddle, for fuck's sake. Um, we're going to fold, though, with the tri suited version out of position. The PLO Doctor is back. Indeed, guys, welcome to the chat. Welcome to the stream. Yenif, welcome to the stream as well. If you guys have any questions, as always, feel free to use the chat on Twitch and on YouTube. And if you guys have been following me the last couple of days on Instagram, I've been playing a good amount of live poker from 5510 and 2550 yesterday as well with good results and uh, fun tables. Pick up the aces in the 2K. Now we're ready for a three bet. Let's 
No three bet so far. Just a call. Let the flop and get called. <clears throat> Turn is pretty bad for my range. And also for my hand. Check, check. Still ahead against kings. Some random queen X. I don't think we should value bet. But uh, it doesn't value bet a straight. That's interesting. Pick up aces again. Okay, that's pretty nice. Ace is 8 4, ace has suit. We will 3 bet this hand. And. I think on this flop, we'll start with a check. Go for a check call. Could obviously have a hand like kings and queens with clubs, but I see that hand checking back quite often on the flop as well. The not flush draw, second half flush draw have all missed. So kind of, kind of prefer to go for check home. Obviously we don't mind the check check at all, just taking down the pot there. Socks in seven, welcome to the stream as well. Let's go indeed, playmaker. Uh, this pot gets checked all the way down to the river. <clears throat> we have eight, six, basically the worst full house possible. I'm actually just gonna call. Like, I do think I have the best hand, but once he calls my race, I'm not sure if... Oh, I don't think he is going to have a worse hand more than half the time, which is the requirement for value racing or betting. So basically, I think we have the best hand a lot more than 50% of the time, but not by the time he calls my race. And then there's still the complication that maybe he can also bluff and uh, get me off my hand, which would be terrible news or a terrible outcome. Ace, queen, queen, five here in the 5k. Three bit against the small button open. Pretty solid flop. Could make a royal. We'll never know. This guy might be sitting out, which would be bad news. Maybe just temporarily. In the 5k, 986 for double on the button with antis. Probably going to get involved.
I don't know about this. I need six four. Don't really want to see a four way, five way flop with this hand. There's way lo way more downside than upside, I think. It's very hard to dominate in any sort of way. But extremely easy to be dominated. And especially in multi way pots, that is I mean, that is the main thing you want to pay attention to. Do you play hands pre that can dominate? Make a post on Instagram. We're live. <clears throat> okay, and the 2K. A call, spike a nine. Not really. I bet to turn my blockers, take it down. This is a spot where I don't like check raising the flop. My hand is just too bad. So we would just check fold. Also don't like leading with how little equity we have. All right, but once it goes check, check, it's an overfolded node. And the turn doesn't fill it back to our flush draw. It's a fine one to just take a step and take it down. So we don't have a heads up match right now. However, there is a six max game I can jump into. See if we can win one of these tournaments, then ape it into some coin and hope for the best. Just close your eyes and join the bull run. In the 1K, King Jack 10 8 single clubs, 2.5x open. Sure, sure. And a call. And we call. A flip of wrap and a ten of hearts blocker could lead. But the player in position with 33 big blinds is just going to rip over the top. Uh, with the not flush draw and some additional equity. So I'm just going to check. Play this 
a bit passive and just go over check call. In case he would go check through, we can also like find ways to bluff this hand at some point. Uh, but as it stands, we play check call three ways here on the flop against a relatively small bet. Interesting turn. Interesting turn. Do we want to check rip? Goes check, check on the turn. River is a five. I'm going to go for a pot size bet. A little bluff. Opponent is not a big fan of folding so far, it looks like. Fold, 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 fold. Nice. In the 5k, in the single race pot, we flop middle set. Button opens, we call big blind calls. And we get two callers in the flop. Great turn. Super blank, a rainbow deuce. I think I'm going to go for not too large of a bet, actually, because we should have a lot of hands in really bad shape. I don't want to scare him away. Nice, okay. Opponent can easily have a king. Could have pocket fours. I don't want to go too greedy. It's going to go for a half pot. Nice, we get snap called. Fuck, king four, the second nuts. I mean, obviously there's <laughs> pretty unfortunate run out there for us. <clears throat> That's what I meant, like on the turn, we keep hands in that are very, very, uh, drawing very, very thin. In this case, the two outs only. Hey, Janandis, is a limping range in the low jack for six max okay? Probably not. It depends on the structure of the game. If there are a lot of antis and low rake, it's pretty unlikely, I guess. But in six max cash, like you don't limp in the low jack. You generally limp in situations where the incentive to see the flop is very high because of the dead money in the middle, mostly in combination with a low rig structure. So the prime example of that would be if you play a tournament with antis, then <clears throat> there's no rake anymore at this point when the t once you're in the tournament and there are antis in the play or in the mix. And because of that, because there are antis plus you don't pay rake, there's a very high incentive to see the flop with as many hands as possible, which is the point where introducing a limping range becomes attractive because that allows you to play more hands. But in six max cash, you usually pay rake and there is no ante. So the incentive to see the flop and fight for the dead money in the middle is very small. 
And that means that you're going to be playing a tight range to begin with anyway. And if you play a tight range to begin with anyway, then you can just go ahead and um, open raise those hands. Like you, you're not limping in a spot where you have a 20% range. You limp in a spot where you have a 50% range or more, typically, typically speaking. <clears throat> Got a playable hand. Gianluca, welcome to the stream. Raise and take. Kings and sevens. Coin poker is not a new site. It's a site based on cryptocurrency. So we're playing with USDT, and you can deposit with all sorts of different ways in uh, through crypto. Exclamation mark coin poker in the chat, or you can head over to pilomastermind.com slash coin poker. What's interesting about coin poker, what a lot of people don't know, is that many, I mean, basically like the top 10 biggest pots pretty much of online poker have all been played on coin poker, at least the top five. If you go over to my Instagram and see my reels, you will see a $7.5 million pot or something, or a bit more than that, I think even. So an over $7 million pot um, was played on coin poker, which is by far, by far uh, the biggest part of online poker history. And it didn't happen on one of the big sides, but it happened on coin. Over here we call a squeeze. Our hand is not good enough. Okay, 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 let's see. So here, like this is a prime example of a spot where we have a very wide limping range because we have such a high incentive incentive to see the flop. 
I mean, this hand could also raise pre, but it's not, it's never wrong to like limp a bunch of hands, basically. Okay, we get called, pawn turn, pop, pop, pot, with a wrapped up flush draw, and we take it down. I'm going to call here in the 1k. Facing a limp in her ISO. It's not the flop we're looking for, obviously. And Jan Luca says, thank you. I follow you since a long time. And a few years ago, I'm in the Mahila Mastermind. Love you, see play. Well, thank you and all. Best of luck to you guys playing today. Sunday, obviously, is a big day for online poker. We've got tournaments. We've got people sitting at home having time. So good luck and best of success at the tables today. Hopefully we can sneak up a little win. Playing some heads up now. Here we bet the flop. This will be most likely a triple. We have three key blockers, eight, eight, king. Just observing this all in here. And the 5k. As far as the guarantees are concerned, uh, we do have a $150,000 guarantee on the 5k. A hundred thousand dollar guarantee on the one K and a sixty thousand dollar guarantee on the two K. Let's see if these uh, guarantees are going to be met with entries or if they there will be an overlay, which is certainly not super uncommon uh, on coin poker, which is also part of the value. And we pick up, pick up some very strong blades. 
Very strong blades in the 1k, raising a call. So far, so good. Pot it. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Not entirely sure what to do here, but could check raise, could check. Gonna go with this move. Could put the middling player in a pretty difficult spot. A bunch of hands here. Take it down, we're definitely happy with this result. In the 5k. Min race under the gun and a call. A little bit of a wheel run down here. Call as well. Weak gut shot, weak flush draw. This will be a check fold. Here the flop check check. Turn top seti. Can we run this set into set? Makes the call. River brings in a million straights or three straights to be precise. Can we value jam? He doesn't open jam himself, which is uh check. Uh, I would have been set over set. Why don't you just jam the turn? Or can we really get called on the river? You know? That's the other question. What time is it for you right now? It's 11 a.m., 11.40 a.m. Pretty comfortable play, playing time. Especially since I played yesterday until like, I think like 1 a.m. <laughs> at the Aria. Something like that. AJ Nandez, I play five card pillow cash games. Oh, wait, we get raised. This guy's quite short. Let's see all five. Okay. Makes it straight. Seems about right. I play five card PLO cash games, and that's twenty five fifty with a hundred dollar rake. Hundred hundred dollar rake, in which way? Nine handed sometimes with tons of whales. How would you adjust in this type of game? It's too broad of a question. Like there are a lot more factors to consider, like how deep are you guys? What is the rake structure? How many players are playing? Or like how are your opponents playing? I would just recommend to join the PLO Mastermind Discord server in which you can ask 
for tips around your hands and strategies for free and uh, converse with other PLO players. But like, bro like the, it's just too broad of a description to really g say anything tangible, you know? The thing is, there's really nothing um, that different from just like learning how PLO works fundamentally through the PLO mastermind, which is mainly based on online poker and how you want to understand and implement the live poker. It's still the same game and this, the same principles and drivers are at play. You just need to understand how to adjust. So what most people lack is... Uh, what most people lack to become better is not the the little tips and tricks of how you can crush live poker. It is the just the root understanding of how the game works. So it's oh, it's more fundamental work that needs to be done versus like learning these small tips and tricks. Is queen eight six? We could squeeze. We're just gonna go ahead and call. Should have squeezed based on this flop. Checks through. At the turn. Alex says, hey, Jane Anderson, I need some help with the PLO Mastermind. Join our Discord and then message the PLO Mastermind support account. In there, you can ask all sorts of questions, but also you can use the public channels to ask questions about the mastermind as well. And if you don't have Discord and you don't want to get Discord, support at plomastermind.com. Over here, we flopped the boat. So you bet the turn. We bet the river and in the 5k, call it 99 deuce deuce. I play PLO says, I believe I heard you say once that you occasionally play an ignition. Do you have any concerns with the bots on the site? Uh, were bots found on ACR in five card PLO or four or only four card? I didn't look into five card PLO, but I wouldn't be surprised if there are or will be bots down the road. On ignition, we did see a lot of proof for collusion in No Limit. But I don't have any experience with No Limit. In PLO, I heard, I mean, I always had good results playing on Ignition. And because you can see the whole cards 24 hours after the fact, you kind of check if people are potentially colluding against you. And I didn't see any of that. But I do know from some PLO Mastermind members that they suspect some collusion or wrongdoing in some sort of way. I haven't seen it, but it is possible the good thing about Ignition is you can see the, the cards after the fact, which is a huge helper to identify how clean your games are. Just giving people access to data, you know, it's a, it's a really good proxy for making yourself accountable to clean games, you know, and that's really the problem of ACR. They don't show the countries that people are playing from. 
And that is already a huge problem. And then GG is 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 uh, trying to ban players who collect data or data mine, which is again a, a huge issue when it comes to policing the games that you're playing and that you're putting your hard earned money into. So that uh, wouldn't have too much confidence with that as a player. King Jack eight seven double in the five K. Um It's gonna play call. The big blind actually could re raise, I just realized. I should have I mean I'm not gonna fold pre even if this guy puts in thirty bigs. But at least that way we can reduce the variance a little bit in case he doesn't jam. Now we will get re jammed um and we will call and uh, try to hit Nice flop here. Let's see. Okay, that's definitely good enough for me to put the money in. We run into a very low equity hand on the flop and win a nice pot, 80 big blinds. So, yeah, I don't know about five card PLO. I would recommend that if you put in significant volume, trying to get your hands some sort of data to understand if the games are clean or not. Or also, you know, just like ask around in the mastermind on Discord if anyone has some sort of experience with it. It is a private game. The rake is 10% and 100. Cap is very high, but opponents are very loose and splashy. It sounds like someone is getting rich in that game. <laughs> it's probably not you. It's probably not the players. But I don't know how the game is. You know, maybe the game is insane and it's amazing, but oftentimes these ridiculous rake structures are making only one entity richer which is the provider of the game uh, are the quarter quarter games running again at aria i found the five five games have become miserable just the usual misrex <laughs> the quarter quarter games are uh, hit and miss i mean oftentimes they don't they will not get formed or they don't start so you kind of got to be on call and um, ready to go whenever they come together, but they, they usually don't run. I'm in the Discord. Nobody answers me. Did you reach out to the support? I'm sure that in our office hours, someone will reach out to you. Uh, we have three spots here. I think we're going to call this. Yep. But it is possible that on a Sunday, if you just message now, that you might not get an instant response, you know, because uh, the s Sundays are not during our office hours. Uh, so this guy goes really small. I don't think we can fold this for versus this sizing. Didn't improve, unfortunately. And we got a fault. Yeah, as we as we say, or as I say every week, we need to win some hands in these tournaments. Otherwise, can't win them. So we did just win a nice hand in the five k. So that's a good start.
Now you can see countries on ACR. Did they change that? Let's see. Okay, okay, so in the 1K, we call here against the cutoff. Cutoff is quite short, but ACH5 for double with the antis and so on. We definitely want to see a flop. It's not our flop. And in the 5k, we raise king, king, deuce, deuce. And we flop a set. I think I will play check back on this flop. For bottom set, no backup. As we turn a full house here on this turn, we have no raising range. It's a nice, nice river. We're hoping for 10 9 now. The Queen X is also possible. Given that we call the turn, we don't have a lot of loss in our range. We're going to go for not a super greedy sizing here, just half pot on the river. See so our tens in a wrap. Not a card. We want a double barrel. We're oftentimes drawing that here. Very often, in fact. So we check back. Hmm. As we're heading to a break in the tournaments. We're still in all three tournaments. In the 2K, we have only 22 big blinds left. So that's not amazing. In the 1K, 65 big blinds left. We're overstarting stack. And we're also overstarting stack in the 5K with 76 big blinds left. Yeah, I don't know why you cannot deposit from uh, Binance, by the way. I just deposited from a from like a, a cold wallet. Actually, just deposited today on Coin Poker through my ledger, and it just works basically instantaneously through Ether. 
How would you play against a whale, but the whole table is also playing against him, and you can almost never get the pot heads up? Yeah, this is one of the common misconceptions people have. It's like, oh, wow, there's one whale on the table. Like, how am I going to change my entire game? Like, how am I going to, you know, relax, just play solid? What you need to learn is you need to learn how to play solid. People like underestimate this so much, you know. That's what I mean. A lot of people are looking for these like tricks. Like what is my next trick that I need to know about to beat live poker? Here we he has jacks. Jack, Jack, seven dudes rain. Um it's not about the tricks, it's about un like playing good PLO. And you don't become a good PLO player by just relying on all these like small tactics and tricks, you know. So there's nothing to really tell you, but learn how to play fundamentally good PLO. Like if you if you would try, like if you would use PLO trainer and you train yourself on preflop ranges, you probably make a huge amount of mistakes. Instead of fixing those mistakes and learning how to play fundamentally solid preflop, you're looking for like random tricks because there's one whale on the table. But if you were, if you would actually learn how PLO works and how to play good PLO fundamentally, you would not only win against this whale at the table, which is only one player, but you would win against all the players on your table. And on the other side, if you only focus on the whale on your table, you're going to play very suboptimal. You're going to lose a lot of money against the other regulars by over adjusting to this one player. So that's not going to work either. Sometimes, you know, the whale plays every single hand, but you just have to fold every single hand pre. That's just like how it works sometimes. If you don't, you're just going to get completely crushed by the other regulars that actually wait for decent hands and good spots. And then they crush the whale and you as well because you're over adjusting. Oops. Uh, looks like we get another opponent. There are so many basic spots in the game, you know, three bet pots, four bet pots, bet sizing choices, preflop ranges. There are so many layers that are that, that you need to just like learn fundamentally of how they work instead of like looking at these like weird tricks. Okay, so apparently ACR has the hover over function. I can't test it now because I uninstalled it. Hello. <laughs> but yeah, well, I mean, that's a, it's better than not being able to see the countries. We check on the flop. Open kings. And this guy's not much behind. So we're fine just betting and getting it in. In the 1k. All in. Call. 
did flop the nuts. Pair the board. Nope. Check for his flop here against large bet. Nice. Not that nice. We split. And over here, we defended against min raise. Beautiful flop, obviously, in the 5k. Check raise. Not a good turn. Not a good river. Uh, not a fan of crawling down here. Such bad blockers for us. Oh, we win. Nice. 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 We got to see this showdown. Actually, we can't see. Yeah, he mucked. Oh, it would have been interesting to know what hand we beat there. Another big hand down to 5k. Raise it up. Okay, this is a serious pot now. We ISO get four, we get three bet by a more than 50 big blind deep stack. Aces go in. Here we go. Aces on kings, hold them, hold them. Uh, king on the river. That was kind of nasty. Especially on that run out. Down to 28 big blinds. This would have been major pot. This would have been a major pot for us. 140. We would have been more than 100. Well, 140 big blinds deep. But we lose with the aces. Yeah, this is also a common misconception. It's good that someone in the chat brings this up. When I say you need to understand how solid poker works, I don't mean at all you need to play tight. Those things are not connected. Like, it's not about playing tight. That's like maybe people misconstrue like the word solid with tight. 
that does it's not the same thing. Like, you, under, you need to understand like what are drivers for certain bluffs. What are hands that want a three bet that you might just be calling at the moment, but it's not a good idea to call those hands. And also, once you understand how to bluff properly, you also start seeing and understanding how your opponents can't bluff in many of the spots, which will help you tremendously to play a lot better as well. Yeah, but solid poker, what I'm talking about is not playing just tight and saying, oh, I'm playing solid. That's not sol solid at all. When you play solid, the boil isn't that dumb and will not fold now. Be and will fold now because you've been playing there for two hours, not playing a hand. Yeah, you don't understand what solid means, really. Uh, yeah. Yeah, if there's one whale, he plays 100% VPIP, and you have a bunch of other racks in the game, and you think you need to change your, you know, a lot of your game, then you're wrong. That is basically what it is. Sure, there are spots where you, I don't know, your head's up against the whale. I mean, that probably never happens. Yeah, so basically, I mean, basically you're just wrong, you know, in thinking you need to adjust a lot of your game. You need to play solid, again, not tight, but you need to play solid enough to beat the other Rex and the whale. But the reality is, like, if there is one whale and everyone is trying to get after him, no, like, your goal shouldn't be to just, like, how can I stack the whale? Like, you're going to lose, you're going to make a lot of mistakes that your opponents can easily exploit along the way of trying to do that. There are other players on the table, you know? In the 5k, we get three bet squeezed. Gotta fold this one. And over here, where we are now, four-handed, I guess. This guy's posting. At the end of the day, it comes down to studying, you know? That's what it comes down to. If you don't study the game, if you don't use any tools, it's going to be uh, pretty tough to play solid and know what you're doing, actually. There will be a check. Potential straight flush incoming or what? What did he have in the King 10 6 forehand? I cannot see the showdown because I'm out of position. I think on this side, the way it works is that it is my showdown. So if he has a weaker hand, he can muck. And when someone mucks in poker, you don't get to see their hand. Just like in live poker, where in this instance, I was out of position on the river. So in live poker, I would check and then they would check back and then I would announce my hand and they would muck. So in that case, you don't get to see their hand. No, this is not the 888 software. We got some hands to work with here. We got some hands in the 2K. We got double suited queens, which is a huge hand in uh, given my stack size. 
And in the 5k, we got a beautiful spot coming up here. Uh, King King 7 7. Okay, quickly back to the Queens. SPR 2. Like this is a spot where we only pot. And we will pot here. All in. We're all in the 2k. Nice. And we're also all in in the 5k over here. This guy called force. Can we get him back? Of course not. He makes quads. Take the pot. We're out in the 5k, unfortunately. I mean, there's not much you can do. If you lose your aces v kings, then your kings v aces don't hold up. You know, that's how these tournaments work. Sometimes you got to win some hands. So 5k, no good and no luck. And we did double through in the 2k and we're still in the 1k, obviously. And we're also in another 1k today, which we're usually not in, which is the $1,000 Falcon. And that is a No Limit Holden tournament. So No Limit Holden tournament, two card, two card PLO, uh, 25,000 chip starting stack. Let's see if we still know how to play this game. Holding this one. I think this is also a fold. The thing about poker is, is you know, even though you can make some generalized tips here and there, it is a game with high complexity and depth. There's so many, when I mean, you think about PLO, there are so many different combinations pre-flop, so many possibilities post-flop. You can be heads up, multi-way, the stack to pot ratio can change, the pre-flop ranges can change. There's so many different hand classes to work with that it's really not in your... Um, in your interest to try to like simplify it too much to like give me the tip here and there i do understand like the like where someone is coming from like that because we are all eventually looking for shortcuts but the delta really like the difference here is just most people just don't study the game at all and so they don't really know what they're doing and where to start and there's really nothing to do about it but to just like get in the lab and start studying look at some sims look at some videos, have conversations with people that are better and have studied the game and get into the weeds, you know, like that's really what it is. And if you have enough curiosity to do that, then you will do very well on poker. If you don't have a lot of curiosity and you, you know, remain surface level when it comes to the depth of your understanding of the game, then you will always be there. You know, you always be stuck at the surface level, which is like really basic strategies, really basic understanding of all the spots or, or some of the spots, I guess. Um, yeah, but I would encourage to, I would encourage to lean into any sort of curiosity you have around the game. And whenever you feel motivated to study, to just lean into that and say, okay, now I feel like I want to learn something more. What can I do? Where can I learn more? How can I learn more? Let me spend some time with this. This guy goes for the late small. I'm going to call. I mean, given the sizing choice. 
would certainly find calling. Okay. Like this, I think, is a snap. Bet on the flop. Given the ranges and play pre. Here I'm not quite sure if you want to open this hand. I did decide to open, but not not totally sure about this one. And now facing the three bet, we still have to call. Get into a quite volatile spot. In the 2K. It's not it's not good enough to get the money in, in on the flop here, unfortunately. Some two card PLO. So in Hold'em, they have a 150k guaranteed in the 1k. It's got limp raises. Still gonna call. Okay. Lose this hand, and in the 2k, we 3-bet against button open. Very strong hand, obviously, in our end here with the queens. All in pre, dirty big man pot. So far, so good. Top two, we have a boat, and we double through. Very nice. We will open limp this hand. Small bone pots. We call. And <clears throat> against the pots, I bet here will actually fold my hand. A micro bet. Okay. We call. Beautiful turn. Definitely just call. Given the SPR on the river. Mm -hmm. 
Do it. You can do it. Do it in the 2K. Unfortunately, doesn't do it. But we're up to 42 big blinds. I think against this sizing, we're going to call this hand. We could lead this flop, but I had to check. It's a pretty clean run out. We are not that afraid of boats here. Could actually have a hand like Ace Ace Four. That would be great. Removal effects. We also have an eight, so that's pretty nice. Okay. We fire. Nine big blinds. Don't jam, don't jam, don't jam. Just call with ace is four and it's all good don't jam don't jam can we get a call okay that's fine too get a fold in the 2K PLO, we got Tony G in the mix now as well. Just joined the table here on 20 ish big blinds. Could be a wild ride.
two card PLO. And the one can be also pick up Aces, by the way. The big band is setting out though. Who's this is gonna look like a steal, right? This is gonna look like a steal all day long. Okay, okay, I guess not. Nines take it down pre as well. The glitch at the Falcon table, exactly. So maybe it's time to win a no limit holding tournament today. Who knows? The return of no limit Jane Anders. When I started playing poker, like I played no limit basically full time for like five years or something. Look at this, two cards, king and a five. I mean, it's easy to remember what you have at least. But it's it's hard to make those combo draws. It's more of a top pair game. It's like live poker here. We got a five way limp pot. Look at his hands. Double suited aces in the 1K. Raise it up to two and a half big blinds. Not my favorite flop so far. Auto check. Interesting. <laughs> nice, nice, nice. Up to 41 big blinds now. Starting stack is 50k. We got 83. Let's put up the info box. 62 players remain. 61 players remain. 13 paid. So we're far away from the money. And over here in the 2k, we got 20 players that remain. We're in 13th position. Six players paid. So still early days for all these tournaments in the No Limit Holden tournament. 131 players left, 18 paid. The No Limit tournaments uh, start a bit later than the PLO tournaments on coin. So this is still like super early stages. We're obviously also very deep still. 25K starting stack. We are sitting on about 35K. And in the 1K against a min open, 9972's double. Will be a call. Flop a flush. Half pot size bet. Okay. Pot 
size turn rip. Okay, I'm gonna let this one go. Um, what happens here? So raise call. This guy, three bet jams. We will just rip over the top, trying to get the player to my left to fold pre. And if not, then we just run it with the nine eight seven five double. Fine either way. We prefer to fold. We do get a fold. This guy has nine seven six two. Somehow we dominate. And nine eight is good. Nine eight high. There you go. I mean kings with nine eight high. Very good. Two monster hands. Two monster hands colliding. Three by print. And then hold them, we pick up tens against an early position raise. Ten. Mm, okay. It's not a bad flop. Trying to clear up some equity. Wow. What a turn. What a turn. How much? Okay, we are pretty deep here. So this guy plays check call. Bunch of draws on the turn as well. Here we go. This sizing. 17 into 14. Maybe we should have gone a bit bigger if we wanted to overbet actually. Yeah. In the one K, very big hand. This guy on the button sitting out, okay. Let's raise it up. Three X. The one can we get three bet after open racing cutoff? I'm gonna make the call of queen eight seven six double. Try to connect. That is uh, connection successful. Trips on a draw heavy board. Can we see a rip? Can we see a jam? It's a five big blind bet. Interesting. Might be a big hand like aces and clubs or. Like ace, ace, king, jack of clubs. Well, all in. All 
in. I put in this not snap calling, actually folding, very nice. Nice pot for us there. Twenty one big blinds deep. Twenty two big blinds deep. We will find King King six four rainbow against Tony G. Comes in with the large bet or large raise. We'll just get this in pre. Doesn't play that well post, like but pre we should do very well here in terms of equity. Here we go. And here we go, we're in. Ace on the flop though, turn two pair and we win, nice. Against the big boss. Take down a nice pot there in a 2K Vulture. That's nice, some guy in the chat is asking, uh, can we get private heads up tables to play heads up challenges? And Tony says, yes, just email support is easy to do. And uh, Tony tells them, just create a structure that you think is fair rake and then do it. Isn't that a reasonable approach, guys? In the 1K? Padats, padats, call and whiff. Left turn, take it down. Remind me, Jane Annis, which No Limit series did you win in the past on Stars? Well, 2013, I won the Sunday Million. I won the Sunday Million on Stars. Uh, it was during a WCube series. So $200 buy in, or like 215 I guess. And I won 170, $179,000. That was a pretty major day in my career back then. I mean, it would it would be a big day today as well. Don't get me wrong, but back then it was it was quite substantial in terms of my role and then tra uh, the trajectory moving forward. Ace Queen, guys, two cards. Okay, easy to remember. Ace Spades Queen Heart. We raise. In the one K, we get called.
Flop is king five three. Okay. Bad and take this one down, and then ace king jack eight double suited. Very strong hand. And we face a three bet by 20 big blind stack, a bit more than 20 big blind stack. I think we could just jam this all in pre or call. I think the GTO play is to go all in pre. And I think that's what we're going to do and see all five this hand. All in in the 1K. Opponent shows up with aces. Jack. Yeah, there's not much we can do there. Domination. Domination nation. We're still in the tournament though. Our hand is just way too big to consider anything else than getting it in. And ace ten nine eight, not gutter here in six five dues. Like he can have a lot of Broadway hands. I think I do want to bet. And aces now. Okay. We get a walk. So this is also a big hand on 25 big blinds. Check, check. Kind of hard to get called here in the river. By worse. I'm actually going to just check this. Maybe I should check this hand.
in the 2k we 17 players left the well, re-entry period is still open and we are in eighth position six players are getting paid so now we get into the critical stage where we do have to win some flips at some point. I mean, we still have 32 big blinds, but it does end. It does tend to be a bit quicker, structurally speaking. There's a three-way all-in upcoming here. Tony is also in the mix. Jack, nine, seven, two diamonds in one club. Tony has about five big blinds behind. All-in call. Do see, wow, what a huge flop for Tony. And he holds up, makes actually the nut flush. And triples. We do have one elimination here that rebuys. So we're still 17 players left. But more chips in circulation. Apart from that, not too much is going on over here. No limit in the 1K. Got 90 big blinds. 25,000 starting stack. We're on 36,000 ish. And we still have plenty of players to beat. And in the 1K PLO Eclipse, 56 players remain. And 13 players are paid. So we are sort of in that middling stage in the both PLO tournaments, critical stage, to develop a potentially big chip stack for the bubble and then eventually the final table. But let's see if we can get this far to begin with. Did you finish playing on ACR because of the bots? Or will you still be playing there? What do you think about iPoker? I don't know much about iPoker. Heard some botting rumors there, but very loosely. Uh, ACR, I mean, there are definitely a lot of... Like, the thing about bots and ACR is, is, is gen, I guess... It's not impossible to beat the bots. Um, but that being said there seem to be a lot of them and they just come back relentlessly, which is definitely a big problem in some sort of way. And I don't know, it's just a headache, you know, to be thinking about like poker by itself is already challenging enough. Poker against other players, like trying to be better, play better than other players, other humans is already a quite competitive pursuit. And that takes up a lot of brain power. Now, if you play poker and you also have to think about potentially getting cheated at all times because the likelihood is so strong, it just really takes away from the fun for me of the game. Very similar with the rake structures as well. I mean, ACR has a good has a good and at high stakes a great rake structure. I'm talking more about other poker sites where the rake structure is very high. Can't really focus on playing the game. We just have to constantly open and close tables because it's very hard to overcome the rake. So you have to be very stringent on table selection, which just takes away from the fun as well. So those are some, some of the primary reasons why I don't play there. Um, but, you know, different people are in different positions and sometimes you don't have much of a choice. And then you just got to play where you got to play. I would be playing in the European market right now or in the dot-com market, I would probably be playing on Stars because they have an, an interesting rake back program that they just revamped. They have a decent rake structure and their games seem to be and always have to be uh, or always seem to be the, the most safest games out there. I think that's a good environment to be playing at. It's not relevant for me personally because I don't, I don't play there. But uh, I think that that's a reasonable recommendation. And then high stakes is sort of its own its own beast. The high stakes ecology. If you play high stakes like ten twenty and above, the entire ecosystem is uh, it's sort of a different world, and you you start having to deal with all these things around accessibility of games, rake structures, transparency security 
like those things become part of the game in some sort of way, which certainly can also be exhausting. <clears throat> That's why nowadays I play a lot more live poker where you can actually just sit down and play and you don't, like you're not getting cheated unless you're playing some sort of weird home game, but in the casino, you're not getting cheated. Uh, the rake is usually good, definitely good enough. And there are plenty of recreational players sitting around making mistakes. And at the same time, you have a good time as well. Just like meeting new people and stuff. So certainly enjoying the live poker grind recently. Here we have a three bet pot. Tony with the three bet squeeze folded me out with my queens. He rips the flop. Takes it down. The bulldozer. And he's up to 72 big blinds. That's a, that's a lot of chips. A lot of chips to work with here. Still 16 players left. And we went down from 32 big blinds to 24 big blinds. So as I, as I always say, it goes quick in these tournaments. We got to win some hands in the 1K. Good starting point here with king, 10, 9, 7, double. King high suit, 10 high suit, 2.5x in the cutoff. And we do get 3-bet by the button again. We have a clear cut continue. So we call. Hit me. Uh, it's one of those... Backdoor flush drop with mid pair at SBR one. We don't love this at all. We have no spade, but I think our hand is like ICM is really unimportant right now. Um, oh man, this is not amazing here. It is a close one. Ah, we do get the fold, which is exactly what we wanted. And we're heading into a five minute break. I'll be guy I'll be back, guys, in just a moment. And uh, we're still in three tournaments. Two of them have four cards, one of them two cards. I'll be right back.
We're back. That smile on your face after reading the message says everything. Which message? The stars still run the Sunday million? I think they do, but they lowered the buy-in to a hundred bucks. Didn't really keep up to date with that, but I do remember that it was kind of a bummer that they lowered it to a hundred bucks. Also, like a hundred bucks is worth way less now than like ten years ago. When I won this on the million and it was at two hundred bucks buy-in. You know, what is really a hundred bucks these days? It's not much. It's not much. I mean, depends which country you're in, but here in the US, a hundred bucks is not that much. How many players are starting out and what do the first three places pay out? Well, you can see here we have, well, how many players started out? So in the 1K, we had 90 entries, 32 re-entries, a price pool of 116,000, 510 USDT, equivalent to dollar. First place, 35,000. That would be nice, 35,000 first place. Can we just do that? Can we just do that? In the Falcon, the No Limit Hold'em tournament, where's the lobby? Wait, here. We had 143 entries, two re-entries, still looking at the price pool of $150,000. So currently, there is an overlay in this tournament. And the first uh, price goes away for $45,000. And in the 2K, we do have now... 24 entries, 17 re-entries, $30,000 on top. And we got 17 players remaining. What does this all mean? It means that we need to win some all-ins. We got Queen Jack Jack 3 on 17, 18 big blinds. Limp on the button. Okay, we will just check. Queen Jack Jack 3, okay, we did not hit a set, but we do have top pair, and we do win. In the 1k, we wake up with a big one, Ace King, Queen 10, single from the hijack. Respectable flop. Not a good one.
I actually play on stars and there is not that much action like in the old days, but you can still grind there with a stack and make good amounts in your pocket. Um, and also have to play on other sides if you play for a living. Yeah, it really depends on the stakes you're playing, right? Once you start playing like 2-5, you got to move to other sides or live poker, different regions. I said it last year during Black Friday. We had the 100k playbook week, which was an exclusive series. I mean, exclusive during the Black Friday period. It was free on, it was free on YouTube, but we took it down because it is exclusive for that period. But in the 100k playbook, I talked about how big of a factor accessibility to games is in, in 2023, 2024. Having access to the right games is a huge deal in poker nowadays. We got aces in the 2K. Can we get some action? 2.5x open on our end. We have about 18 and a half big blinds. Actually, 19 and a half big blinds. Call it 20 bigs. Tony with the call. And a call from the big. Dream flop on seven for duck. Lead out. Sure. Sure, sure, sure. Putt. Fault. We take it. 27, 28 big blinds now. King 996. We will find an open. A little nine ball would be good. And yeah, please no squeeze. Nine. Hmm. I'll still take a nine. Fault. Ace Queen again in the two card streets. Okay, we see an open. This guy's a big stack. Wow, 280 ish big blinds. That's a big stack. And three bets, I guess, were out of the mix. Ace Queen into the muck. Hey Robin, welcome to the to stream. Seventeen <clears throat> big blinds over here. Tony with the pressure. And the Sunday Million is often the PKO as well. It doesn't sound great either. The PKOs. PKOs are like fine ones in a while, but they really took over too much of the landscape IMO. 
and now mystery bounties and whatnot, you know. We got a blind increase in the 2K. It's about time. It's about time to make a hand here, Pray. Especially post as well. Down to less than uh, 14 bait blinds. Interesting hand here in the 1k. Blinds increased here as well. I think we do have a call this hand on the button. Can we connect? I mean, good enough, I guess. Still doing really good against hands like Pocket Kings. If he has aces exactly, it's not looking that great, but we're also unblocking kings, queens, and jacks. So just going to bet small, and uh, if we do have to call it off, we'll call it off. But we do see a check fold, and that is certainly a great outcome. Two card streets. And in the 2K, 13 big blind steep, 13 and a half big blind steep. We have kind of marginal queens. We're still pretty far away from the bubble, I suppose. Crazy daisy. We're just gonna pot this flop here in a moment. And this is a single raised pot we open raised and we see bet. And we get donk potted on the other on the other side, by the way. Okay. Um all in in 2k. This is it. Got our flush draw, queens, 69%, 72%, a hundred. So let's go. Double through. And look at this magical turn card. We turn the Nuts in the 1k. 
Got a fire, set up a river jam, but we do see a fold. Still a fine pot to win there. Here versus 3x, 0.7 anti as well. I mean, the big blend could reopen, which would suck quite a bit. But we will make the call. Don't reopen. Okay, okay. A small bet here allowing I think this guy doesn't reopen the action here almost ever because he was just donk jam all in in my opinion so I'm not really a huge fan of the small sizing but we call check on the turn I mean, we're getting a really good price in the flop like there are also some turns we can bluff but now it's time to check fold if we do see a bet it will be a larger bet anyway And we will defend this hand against min rays in the one K. And we pick up our favorite no limit hand, apparently ace queen. This is the real Tony G. Yes. It's not a good flop. Tens again. We always have ace, queen, or tens. Okay. This is a massive three bet, isn't it? <clears throat> this sizing seems very large. I mean, I don't know that much about no limit, but I have 47 big blinds. Like he's tributing a third of my stack, basically. We could call trying to fade the ace and the king, but I think we're just going to rip this one in. Could have jacks. Could have jacks. He probably has ace king, though, like ace queen suited. Ace king. Okay, hold him. Yes, let's go. It's got limbs on 12 big blinds. Okay.
His queen has ended many tournament lives. Yeah, that's very true. Oh, Tony is all in. Seems to have lost a huge hand. Um, let's call. Okay, King Jack Jack. Just trying to check this one down. Do you have the best hand? Tony is the next place finisher, and we have nine players left. Six players paid. So we are getting closer and closer to the bubble. In fact, we are in the pre bubble. Eight players. We just had another bust out. Now, eight players remain. Eight players remain, six players paid. We are currently eight position, but I imagine the stacks are quite close together. Well, yeah, I mean, we do need a double probably. Doable, doable. Ace, king, queen, six, pre-bubble. We could just three bet and try to take this down pre or fold. I'm going to play, I guess I'm going to play a bit on the tighter side now. That we are pre-bubbling here. In the meantime, over here in the 1k, we defended the big blind. And we'll play check call. Can we see a check back? We do, but the river is pretty bad. You should connect very well with this river. We give up moat. Winning both would be greedy, I guess. So let's win the 1k and top 3 in the 2k, please. Well, we're also playing the no limit. The no limit. So in theory, we could win three tournaments. In practice, we might only win two. So we'll see. Defend here. Okay, okay, okay. Got a pair and a flush draw and a straight draw. Pot says bet. Um, I suppose that jamming doesn't make too much sense. So 
So we just call and make a flush. Nice. We also have three clubs. So obviously we are trying to induce now a jam. I'm going to check in order to try to do that. Okay. And over here, we're all in in the 1K for 23 big blinds with Ace King King. Don't show me aces. Okay, hold them. Hold. Hold them. Yes. What? No. I thought about aces. He has ace 10. Oh, man. This guy three bets me with ace 10, 9, 8 low suit. And we can't do it with the ace king king. Uh, 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 we bust, we bust, we bust in the 1K. Sad news. Sad news, sad news. In the 2K, eight players left. We're in fifth position right now. That was a sad river. Over here, we raise the cutoff. Flop is set.
over here in the cache game, you flop a set in a single race part. Ripplin leads out and gets called. I think we're just going to rip this in. Yeah, given how short the big blind is, I don't think we're going to see King King here very often from either player or 6-6. Six, six. Still eight players in the 2k and six are getting paid. Uh, we are in the shortest stack position. We're also playing some cash games, a 2-5 PLO here in coin. I'm just going to call versus a small band open. Okay, this is a good flop. Should we go into 2k? Small man opens, we call. Well, top pair open in a straight draw. The money goes in for our tournament life. We run into some hand and win. Here we go. 31 big blinds. Let's go. Very important pot here around the bubble, pre-bubble stage. 31 big blinds, five times starting stack. We're now in fifth position out of eight. Six players are getting paid.
top set. Okay, so the 2k we opened the cutoff and we had two callers. Solid flop. We do get a donk jam. Guess we rip. Oh god, he calls. He has a straight heart. Straight flash, what the fuck? Oh, oh God. How is this even real? How is this even real, man? Oh, man. This is ridiculous. Oh man, what was that? What was that? Today is not the day, apparently. What was that? He turned the flush in the 97 percenter just for him to hit the straight flush one out on the river. On the bubble of the tournament, the other guy would have busted an eight or did, and we bust in seven. Six players paid. Massive pot as well. What the hell? Man, that was just dramatic. Where's the hand? I don't know where the hand is, man. That was just a traumatic experience in the streets today. Uh, da, 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 da. He ran so many good hands into into a better hand by the river today. It's not it's not nice. That's not nice. It is not very nice. We're still in the Holden tournament, but this can take forever and ages. So we're going to end the stream. Unfortunately, not any deep runs today. I mean, you guys saw the hands. I mean, we tried, we tried, but the deck was not in our favor today. At least not online. It was not in our favor. What are you going to do? You know? Anyways... Hopefully you guys will have a better Sunday. Look into this hand and then finish it up. I like this guy's name, BTC to 100K. I mean, it's a little bit of a low ball, but we can start with 100K for BTC. Yeah, that was uh, pretty unfortunate, pretty unfortunate. I'm going to catch up on my reaction here in a moment. I want to see. I want to see the pain one more time. I guess I didn't see it before. I felt it before. Uh, what is this river? 97%. Just easy peasy straight flizzy on the river. Really, really, really.
Okay, so in the 2K we open the cutoff and we have two callers. Solid flop. Mm -hmm. We do get a donk jam. Guess we rip. Mm -hmm. Oh god, he calls. He has a straight heart. Straight flash, what the fuck? Oh, oh God. How is this even real? How is this even real, man? <laughs> oh, man. This is ridiculous. Oh man, what was that? What was that? Today is not the day, apparently. What was that? He turned the flush in the 97 percenter. Just for him to hit the straight flush one out on the river. On the bubble of the tournament. The other guy would have busted an eight or did, and we bust in seven. Six players paid. Massive pot as well. <sighs> GG's guys. Well, I guess this hand is will be the last one that was a brutal run out it happens every day to me i feel it of course it happens every day running to a straight flush okay anyway guys <laughs> ggs guys oh, we have another hand okay let's let's have a look at this one that was pretty brutal we will wrap it up for the day guys hopefully you've enjoyed the show Good luck at the tables, playing yourself, and uh, we will reconnect next week. Until then, actually, yeah, I'm, I will release a vlog, by the way, tomorrow or the day after. Uh, first vlog in a while, live cash games at the Aria. Definitely check it out, live PLO vlog, releasing in uh, one or two days here on the channel on YouTube. If you haven't subscribed, now is the time so that you guys don't forget to watch it.